Hi, Hi hello, hello internet, internet children. children. My name is Taylor. My name is Jay. And today we are in Seattle, Washington for Jay's book signing for What Light. Yay! My new book, What Light, just came out a couple weeks ago and I'm very excited about it. On the surface, it's a Christmas love story and it's one I've been wanting to tell for over a decade. So I have some this or that questions to start. Coffee or hot chocolate? I've been drinking more hot chocolate now that the book's out. Yeah. And so much hot chocolate. Caleb or Clay? Clay's a lot more more like me, so I kind of have to go me. But when you say your similarities are? a lot shyer like him, um, yeah. Your book or the book to film adaptation? Not has, necessarily your book. It has to be the book. Yeah. First. What's your favorite book to film adaptation? Perks of Being a Wallflower. So good. <laughs> and, you know, the same, Stephen Chbosky yeah. did, wrote both and directed the film, yeah. which I think is why it works so yeah. well. Yeah. 13 Reasons Why is becoming a Netflix series, yeah. so we're going to have to talk about that. Uh, Instagram or Twitter? Instagram. What's your favorite part about Instagram? Well, recently I've loved seeing people post these really professional looking photos of my book. I know, those are really cool. I'm not there at all at my Instagram. I don't know how means. they do it. How do they do it? <laughs> Email or writing a letter? Email. Yeah. Which is not as special. But it's faster. Easier, yeah. Reading your book and talking about your book at book events or do you like the actual signing of the book? I, I very rarely read from the book. But I love talking about it though. You've been on tour, so what's your favorite city you've gone to so far other than Seattle? With that qualifier in there, I don't know. It's hard. You know, it's so funny. It's hard to look back and remember which city <laughs> each book's event was yeah. in because I'm in and out so quickly. Yeah. I can remember all of them. Like, they all have very specific things that made them stand out. What was your favorite part of being on tour? It's fun talking about this new book. Yeah. You know, I've had two books out in nine years. Now my third one's coming out. It's nice to be able to talk about something new, especially something that I've been working on for so long. What's your newest book? Or like, does it have a title? What can you tell us about it? I can't say what it was, what it's about, or the title. But there's a 13 Reasons Why 10th Anniversary Edition coming out at the end of the year. Yeah. And in there, it at least gives the title of my new book away. Ooh. It's a one word title, which I've never had before. One word title? Five letters. Alright, we're gonna have a same. we're gonna have a guessing game in the comments. <laughs> Washington or California? They both have perks. I'm from California, so I know more people. I actually love the Seattle weather. Oh That's really? That's my kind of Where art artistic have? weather. I just noticed it so just just over a mile from this bookstore is where they shot the cover for 13 Reasons Why. Okay, you told me about that on Did Twitter I, okay, one time. Yeah, yeah. It's on the corner of 22nd and 77. In the dark, yes. I'm going to have to go like recreate that cover <laughs> and post it on I've Twitter. I've done that. You I've have? Recreated. What is What Light about for the viewers who don't know? About this girl who lives on a Christmas tree farm up in Oregon. And once a year from Thanksgiving to Christmas, they live 17 hours to the south in California in a town very similar to where I live. While she's there, she falls for a guy even though she's going to leave in a few weeks. The boy has this backstory that people warn her against him, but she feels she knows who he is now. What inspired you to write in Oregon? Did you go to Oregon? I did. I went to two Christmas tree farms in Oregon, including the one that really inspired that. I read about a family that did that. Inspired what light? You've talked about the Christmas tree farms, but what inspired Sierra and Caleb's past? Sierra's character was there pretty much from the beginning. So I knew there was this love story. I knew, you know, this girl that has two lives. It wasn't until I figured out what was unique about the boy she falls for that I could really get into the book. Right. It took years to figure out. It wasn't until I took my friend and her name is Krista Vizier, she's a Y author as well, and we took her dog for a walk and she said, you need to finish this book, you've been talking about it for years, so by the end of this dog walk, we're going to figure out Caleb's backstory. That's really so cool. So she knew what I really wanted to do with the book, so she was able to help me brainstorm. What was the most difficult character to write? Jeremiah, who was Caleb's best friend from the past. Yeah was a character that went through a lot of changes. People see the character differently based on who they are. Right. And I've seen a lot of people have very different opinions on Jeremiah. That's interesting. Yeah. What's a day in the life of Jay Asher like? Every day is different. I'm anti-schedule. Not by choice. It just doesn't work for me. I can't force writing. I've That's tried. Right. If I'm just not inspired to write, I can't do it. I'm so. assuming that none of your books are National Novel Writing Month. No, I tried that, and I got a couple hundred words into it. 
how I did it last year. I got like 500 words in and I was like, I don't know That's what to it. do. Yeah. Just because you're an author, does that mean you read avidly or do you not really have time? I do read a lot, but I mostly read nonfiction. I found when I read fiction, I'm just overanalyzing it. <laughs> yeah, so I'll read fiction if somebody's like me to get a quote for a book or something. What's your favorite nonfiction you've read recently? Oh, actually, here, I'll show you the picture of the one I'm reading right oh, now. Cool. This is called A Season with the Witch. Your top books of 2016, because we're reaching the end. Do you have like a list that you compile in your Oh, room? man. Um, well, the one I read the most recently that I really love, Holding Up the Universe by uh, Jennifer Yes. <laughs> you have a favorite emoji. Like, do you text and like have a favorite emoji? The happy face. Yeah. Like, my thing. like just the like regular smile yeah, happy face. There's yeah. so many different happy faces. I know. Faces. I've started inserting other ones, especially with what light. I started <laughs> adding Christmas trees. Did you go from writing a book as dark as Thirteen Reasons Why yeah. to as happy as what light? It's weird because it wasn't until I was about halfway into the book, realizing what Sierra and Caleb's relationship was all about, that I had this really cool epiphany, I guess, that. While they're opposites, they're actually very, very similar. They're like the opposite sides of the same idea. One is a cautionary tale about not letting people reach out to you, whereas what light is this kind of uplifting tale that shows the beauty of being there for other yeah. people and letting people grow. So the tone is very different, but they say very similar things. After reading 13 Reasons Why, I think a lot of people were expecting it they to be very were. similar, and so everybody was like, whoa, this is a shock. Yeah. Jay Asher can write happy books. People were very shocked by that, which to me, honestly, it's weird because I completely felt like a rebel writing that book <laughs> because I knew what people were expecting yeah. and I knew this was going to be a very, very different tone. And I was very what? curious about what the response was going to be. Like, I love the book, so I'm confident with, about it, but I was very curious to see yeah. how it was going to take people. So do you write with music? I did write What Light with a lot of music. So okay. really, because it's the settings of Christmas, Christmas on Pandora, yeah. Um, and there were definitely certain songs that I, I would listen to to inspire certain scenes. With my previous books, I didn't listen to music when I wrote it, but I would listen to music ahead of time. Getting into like the 13 Reasons Why questions, because I know a lot of people have yeah. them. What kind of compelled you to write 13 Reasons Why? I can look back and see the inspiration came because I had a close relative who attempted suicide at that same age. But that was, I think, nine years before I came up with the idea for the book. I never thought I'd write about it. The idea, when it came to me, it came pretty fully formed. And it was obvious that's where my understanding of the issue came from. Um, but I set out to write it because I was just intrigued by the premise of the story. Because of my personal experience with it, I felt comfortable writing it. So you speak at a lot of like middle schools and high schools. What is so important to you about that? A lot of people and like authors will write about the topic but not be as much of an activist for um, anti-bullying as you are. It was a hard role for me to take on because when I was writing the book, I never assumed, never felt that I was an expert or anything. Right. I had an understanding that it was a responsible thing to, to write this book. If I can help start a discussion and help get rid of some of the stigma that makes it hard to talk about this, then great, let's let the book do that. It didn't feel like I wanted to really go out and do that, but I started having a lot of schools ask me to come very specifically to talk about that issue. And while I was uncomfortable with that, I felt it's a great, amazing opportunity. I believed in what I was saying, yeah. and I believed in the message of the book, so I decided, okay, I'll yeah. do that. You did the 50 States Against Bullying tour. So, like, what was that about, and did you, like, go to every state, and how did you choose the cities? My publisher asked if I'd be willing to do that, which just sounded exhausting, but it sounded so cool. Yeah. If a school would like me, you know, here's how you nominate yourself to be a part of this. We didn't know how many schools were going to apply, but over 700 schools well, applied for that. And then they good. chose the schools in one school year I visited every state, spoke at a school everywhere. It's crazy. And it was an amazing experience. Yeah. You know so many lives must have been touched. I had some amazing the most beautiful, heartwarming moments at so many schools and for so many different reasons. Yeah. One of my favorite moments was I was out of school and a lot of what I do because I didn't want to put myself as the expert I share a lot of emails from readers, from their experiences with the book and what they have decided to do to help others because of the book. And at one of the schools, one of the girls who wrote me the email I was sharing was in the audience. And I didn't know that. And she came up to me afterwards with tears in her eyes because she realized, one, how much her words meant to me 
but also now her words were getting spread around the country in a very positive way. I think like so many students are just unaware of the situation and yeah. don't really know like what they're doing to either make it better or make it worse. Yeah. About the 13 Reasons Why Adaptation, yeah. do you feel like the 13 Reasons Why Adaptation on Netflix will be faithful to the book? Yeah, very much so. A lot of the details are very faithful of the characters and the right. situations and all of that. But because it's a 13 episode yeah. series, we have a full hour for each reason. So in a way, they have a chance to expand on things. So we're going to get to know a little bit about some of the characters that the book just didn't allow. There's changes just like in any adaptation, but they're They've been very, very faithful with the tone and the message. I've been so lucky with the people involved. They just completely got the book. A lot of them were fans of the book first. What they loved about the book, they want to keep in the right. series. Right. I think that's so important that yeah. you're finding people who love the book to yeah. adapt it. Because there's so many times, we see it so much in Hollywood, where they just change it completely and don't yeah. keep in mind the fans. And usually what makes it an unsuccessful adaptation is when it's the tone or the message that's changed. Do you have a cameo on the show? I haven't filmed one yet. Okay. They, it's open if I want to. They only have a few more weeks to film. Kind of unsure if I want to. I have some friends and family members who've made cameos, that's awesome. which is really cool. And my editor of 13 Reasons Why is, has a cameo. So when will it air, or do we have a date for that yet? I don't know the exact date. I know right now they're planning for March. The cast is wonderful. The cast is amazing. Okay. Met everybody? But I haven't seen everybody film it, but the ones that I've seen filming their roles, it's so weird to see. Those are the characters I created, and That's they crazy. are just so into their roles. No, I'm like so jealous because I know there's going to be a red carpet, and I want to come so bad. Just meet everybody. <laughs> the episode structure is it like a cassette tape per episode, or does mm -hmm. they overlap? Each reason, or reason will be its own episode, just like in the book. Right. Each reason has its own chapter. Though there's actually going to be more overlapping than okay. in the book between characters and all that so I think people are going to read it. People who love the book are going to be excited to see how that overlapping occurs. Okay, I'm really interested in it's, seeing they, how it turns yeah, out. They've been really creative with it. Like, they've they've had fun with it. Final question for you is what do you have to say to the viewers of Taylicious Reads? Thanks for sticking through the whole interview, <laughs> but if you follow her, you obviously know what she does and how great she is. You also know how lucky I am to be interviewed by her, so Thank thanks so for watching this interview. Watch the rest of her other interviews. Oh, thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you Jay for being here. Thank you. Give me your thumbs if you liked this video. We love the thumbs. Comment down below what Jay Asher book is your favorite and I will see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye! bye.